why do designers keep putting slashes in the naming of everything? I'll just show you. We're again looking at Figma through, uh, this is an edit account. So this is the account that I use here as a designer and it has additional properties, uh, which you may not be available in your free view only account. In this case, if I select this particular button, you can see that I'm able to swap out the instance with a related component such as the filled button. And you can also see that it automatically no suggests the alternative component that it might need to be swapped with. The reason it knows this is because of the use of the hashes. The slash essentially automatically creates a new menu within Figma, and this is seen in other design software as well. Therefore, combining all the elements with the same names, so all the buttons have the word button to start, and then the word square, but then the word filled and outlined varies. And so this makes uh, keeping track of components in design software very easy by using this slash naming technique. The slash naming technique in Figma also allows you to group color styles. For instance, this uh, rectangle here, if we were to color it, uh, would be able to select from one of these two styles. Sometimes it gets much more complicated um, and you have many color styles to choose from. And therefore, by using a slash technique in your naming approach, Figma will automatically group ideas or entities which have uh, similar preceding uh, titles. So here, the preceding title before the slash varies. And therefore, when we go in to apply the color options, it's actually grouped each of our colors above the respective uh, slash title. And this not only applies to fills, but also to text and effects and other types of styles and variables which you can apply throughout the document. And so from a designer perspective, it makes it easier by inserting these slashes uh, to keep track of different elements. But as we had seen before, from a developer perspective, it sometimes can become much more tricky because the color style, for instance, for this component, which is being applied, if we command press just to select the very back one, is we're applying the tutorial to color black essentially variable. So this is a CSS variable in theory which should be applied in the code as the variable name and not the actual hex code. If you go in to look at the code for this, you can see that the background color, it provides us the actual hex code, but what we want is the thing right above that color, which is the variable name, tutorial2 slash color black. And it's not, it doesn't always jump out at you that this is actually a CSS variable, which is probably defined elsewhere in the project, but that's what's being provided above the coloring here. It's sometimes a little bit more obvious when you look in the table view. It'll say that the fill color style is tutorial2 slash color black, and it's, um, just something you need to be aware of that they're probably using a lot of standard text uh, type and color uh, styles throughout the document and you want to be coding in the style not the actual um, hard code. So I, my approach now will be to actually try to make this much more easier for the developers and name these colors based on the actual uh, CSS names which we're going to be using throughout the code base so that when you are in code inspection mode that it does jump out at you a little bit more when you're looking at a particular element that that is the code uh, that you want to call.